This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the best online retailer for Magic the Gathering singles and sealed product. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one source for Magic the Gathering news and content. Hello everyone, uh, I go by Substance D, and I am here to talk about my Brago King Eternal deck. Hello, my name is Substance D, and this is my Brago King Eternal deck. As you can see, Brago is an Azorius General. Uh, two colorless, one blue, one white. He's a 2-4 flyer. Whenever he deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So I'm sure you can see, this is going to be an Azorius Blink deck. So starting off with our creatures, we're going to have Solemn Simulacrum. Uh... He's just a, a obvious choice for a commander deck, especially one where you can blink him in and out and uh, go and search your library for those basic lands and thin that out. We have Sun Titan, a little bit of recursion. Some of your uh, permanents are going to be three or less, and he's going to help you keep those on the board. Frost Titan, <clears throat> really good to lock down any serious threats at the moment, and then as the game progresses, you can actually start locking down land so you can control your uh, opponent a lot better. Lavinia of the Tenth. Another one of our control creatures detains anything with uh, converted mana cost four or less. And she has protection from red, which is really good against the uh, goblin decks like Perforos, Krenko, Kikijiki. Uh, Flicker Wisp. So uh, whenever that comes in, you can exile another one of your own permanents. You can also exile a uh, permanents your opponent's control. And there's a way for you to be able to abuse Flicker Wisp and just uh, kick stuff off the board and then not come back in this deck. Miss Metal Witch. She's good to be able to save uh, creatures that you don't want to have uh, blown up at that time. Uh, Snapcaster. Uh, there are spells in this deck that you want to get double uh, double uses out of, and he's really good at doing that. You can use him multiple times in the game. Weathered Wayfarer is a 1-4-1-1. One one one. Pay a white and tap him. Search your library for a land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Play this ability only if an opponent controls more lands than you. So it's kind of like a, uh, a land tax in a way uh, it's kind of worse because you don't get to fetch out as many lands, but you do get to fetch out any land and not just basics. So you can fetch your Temple of the False God or anything like that. Then we have Deadeye Navigator, uh, pretty obvious choice for a Blink deck. Metamai the Ageless, uh, he's a good combat trick. I mean, uh, you get him in there, he deals combat damage, you take an extra turn. Uh, in a deck like this, that extra turn can be the insta-win that you need. Mnemonic Wall, another one of our ways to get our uh, get our spells back. Blink this in and out of play, and you pretty much have uh, an infinite hand. Mold Drifter, another obvious. Uh, comes into play, draw two cards uh, with Evoke. So you can get as many activations out of this as you want, not just with Brago, but with Miss Meadow Witch, with... Uh, Dead Eye Navigator and with some of the spells that you run. Peregrine Drake. A really nice card. Uh, five for a five five or for a two three flyer. When it comes into play, untap up to five lands. If you have any of your double tapping lands out, you've used some mana rocks in order to do this. Uh, you can cast a couple of different spells, cast Peregrine Drake, and reset your mana base. Swing with Brago, deal combat damage, and then reset your mana rocks. And you start in your second main phase off with everything you should have been should have had tapped down. And we have a Fara. Now, in a blink deck, it's really good to have. You're going to be doing stuff almost every single turn. So in, even in a multipod, uh, you, you should be able to draw a, a card at least every other turn. Dungeon Geist. Another one of those ways for you to lock down a, uh, a big threat that an opponent controls. And uh, you can blink this in and out of play and lock down multiples, which is really nice. Heliod's Pilgrim. When she enters the battlefield, search your library for an aura card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. So that's how you're going to uh, suit up your Brago. Or really any creature you want to go aggro with at the time. Thassa. Uh, she's really good. She gives you that uh, scry. She's able to uh, make a creature go unblockable, which is really great because with Brago, you want to guarantee him getting through. So, we have Phyrexian and Jester. 
who comes into play, you get to exile a non-token creature, and then it gets plus X plus Y, where uh, it's that creature's power and toughness. Uh, he's really good. Um, you can run duplicate in his place or run them side by side. I'll run the Infixion uh, Ingester because he tends to be a little bit more aggressive, and I do like that. Resolute Archangel. Great card. Uh, you start getting low on health. You play a Resolute Archangel. You're right back at the start. You start getting low again. You blink her out. You're right back at the start. It is pretty much impossible to die at that point. Restoration, Restoration Angel. Uh, just a typical blink card. Um, pretty standard, I think. Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, three and a uh, Phyrexian Blue. Enters a battlefield as a copy of a creature or an artifact. It's an artifact in addition to its other type. So it is a clone that can hit your mana rocks or your opponent's mana rocks or really just anything that you want at the time. So. Eidolon of Countless Battles. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each uh, cre creature you control and aura. Uh, he's also a creature himself, so that helps. He's a really good aggressive beat stick. As well as Geist of St. Traft. Uh, whenever you get to attack with him, you're going to net that extra little bit of damage. Even if it's not extra damage, it's uh, tying up one of their blockers. <clears throat> Knight, Captain of Eos. Uh, he's uh, one of your token uh, production creatures. Uh, comes into play with two one ones, and then you pay a white and sack a soldier. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So you can ensure not to be taking combat damage on top of like Resolute Archangel. Again, makes this deck really hard to kill. Geist honored, Geist honored Monk uh, comes in with two white spirit, uh, one one white spirit creature tokens and power and toughness equal to number of creatures you control. You start blinking Geist Honored Monk out with Knight Captain of Eos, and you're going to have yourself a nice big beat stick, and people are going to see this deck start actually being aggressive as opposed to laid back and doing things kind of in the background. Sphinx of Athun. Uh, ETBs uh, reveal top five cards of your library, and opponent separates them in two piles, and you choose one. Run two planeswalkers. We got Vincer, so that we can be blinking things out, making our creatures unblockable again. A big important thing. Uh, ultimate is uh, get an emblem. Well, whenever you cast a cast a spell, exile target permanent. So, and then we have Elspeth, again another one of our token productions. Uh, she allows us to control the board if uh, anything starts getting too big on there, and we don't like that at the time. And also, if you uh, ultimate her, uh, your creatures get plus two, plus two, and have flying. So Now we're getting into the spells. We have three dreams, so you can tutor up three different auras of different names, which in Commander is not hard to do at all. So it's one of our tutors. Our second one is Plea for Guidance. Search your library for two enchantments, reveal them, put them into your hand. A little steep, but I mean, it's a good budget tutor. And it allows you to fetch any enchantment, not just auras like Three Dreams. Enlightened Tutor. You get to fetch an enchantment or an artifact. So you you can uh, turn one, set up your next draw for a soul ring or really just anything that you're needing. Mystical Tutor. Fetches up an instant or sorcery. So <clears throat> uh, it's not uncommon. It's not the best play in the world, but it, I have been known to Mystical Tutor for an Enlightened Tutor. <laughs> to make sure that I get something I need drastically to change the game. Card draw, we have Blue Sun Zenith. I said uh, you're going to be able to net a lot of cards. So this is one of the ways you're going to be able to do that. This with Peregrine Drake and a Deadeye Navigator. And you can, if you really wanted to, you could deck an opponent. Uh, Sphinx's Revelation. Another really good card to draw X life. Uh, gain X life, draw X cards. Again, with the Blue Sun Zenith thing. Uh, you can see how ridiculous that card will be. Route. Uh, destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Two additional colorless that fires off as an instant. Uh, this catches opponents off guard a lot. Uh, you could use uh, Faded Retribution. Uh, and then on your turn you get to Scry as well. And it does hit more, but this uh, makes it where creatures can't be regenerated. And I've had more problems with regeneration than I have. Anything else? Supreme Verdict. Can't be countered. So that's a good one. Cyclonic Rift, probably, I think, the one of the best board wipes ever made. So, one-sided. Swords to Plowshares. Uh, you're running white, so why not? As well as Path to Exile. 
It's going to let you hit those commanders, uh, get big stuff off the board that you don't like at the time. Um, again, I've done it to my own creatures in response to things before to either gain more life or maybe just to fetch that extra land card I need to actually start winning the game. Uh, retether. Uh, if something dies and it has a bunch of your ores attached to it, this makes it where you can pull those ores back out. Another good card to run with or instead of that is Replenish. It's an older card. It's about $14. Uh, Momentary Blink. Blink spell for a creature that you control with Flashback. Cloud Shift. Um, kind of the standard, I think. Turn to Mist. Uh, that one's good for just any creature, so it uh, even affects your opponents. Ghost Way. Mass Blink. Uh, if you got the mana, you can Ghost Way at the end of an opponent's instep and then uh, cast a route for uh, its uh, extra two extra colorless for an instant speed. Otherworldly Journey. Again, it's any creature, but uh, it also returns that creature back onto the battlefield with plus one plus one counter. So if you need to, you can use it on an opponent's creature, but you can also use it on yours and make yours bigger in the process. Skybind. Constellation, whenever Skybind or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, exile target non-enchantment permanent. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. With this and uh, Flicker Wisp, end step's a really important deal because we do actually run Sundial of the Infinite. Vanishing Light, uh, just an Oblivion Ring effect. So, Crackdown, non-white creatures with power 3 or greater don't untap during their controller's untap step. Uh, this messes up a lot more people than you would think, and as you can tell, there's only really a couple of creatures in this deck that are going to even try to be aggressive that aren't white. Actually, Oblivion Ring. <laughs> uh, Exile is another target permanent. Uh, whenever it leaves the battlefield, it returns it to its owner's control. Ghostly Prison. Creatures can't attack you unless they pay two colorless. Uh, for each creature he or she uh, controls, it's attacking you, so... Um, that's really nice. It uh, locks down what your opponent can do to an extent. Detention Sphere, another Oblivion Ring effect. As you can tell, uh, with all of your enchantments, Ghostly Prison um, is nice. Ristic Study, whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card unless that player uh, pays one colorless. So this is going to be another way that you tax your opponent's resources. Now with these, all the other enchantments, Ghostly Prison, you have Sphere of Safety. Creatures can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless their controller pays X for each of those creatures where X is the number of enchantments you control. So you pair Sphere of Safety with only Ghostly Prison. They're having to pay at least four colorless to attack with one creature. Uh, with Ristic Study, they're having to either pay uh, to keep you from drawing cards or allow you that a card advantage. So it really does tax your opponent's resources. Ethereal Armor. Uh, with all the enchantments that you're running, it's good to give bonuses for that. Felidar Umbra. Uh, the creature has lifelink. You can bounce it around, and it's a totem armor. So, Hyena Umbra gives a plus one, plus one on first strike, and is also a totem armor. So that's really nice. Righteous Authority. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each card in its controller's hand at the beginning of the draw step. Of Enchanted Creature's controller, that player draws an additional card. So that's good for card advantage, and like I showed you, with as many ways as this deck has to draw multiple cards, uh, you do have big hands. Celestial Mantle, plus three, plus three. Whenever uh, the creature deals combat damage to a player, you double its controller's life total. Uh, that's really important, again. Uh, it's really important to try to keep yourself as hard to kill as possible, and in this deck, you do have to take uh, damage. You have to use your life as a resource. So... These different ways of bumping yourself back up to start or quickly gaining ground on your opponent is really important. Flicker form. Exile. Uh, it's a one white, one colorless. Uh, pay two white and two colorless. Exile the enchanted creature. All ores attached to it. At the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, return the uh, other cards exiled this way to the battlefield under it as well. So it's a way for you to pop your Brago or... Anything else out that has a lot of enchantments on it. <clears throat> Aqueous Form. Enchanted creature can't be blocked. And whenever it attacks, you get to scry one. Again, you're wanting to get your creatures through. So this is good. Gift of Immortality. Uh, whenever the enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of the next end step. 
you throw this on Brago, Brago dies, you can go ahead and uh, opt to ship him to the graveyard uh, and then immediately pop him back out with Gift of Immortality. And if they try to double tap him, then you can go ahead and move him into the command zone if you feel uh, comfortable with that. Sundial of the Infinite. The reason why this card is so important. Pay one, tap it, in turn. Activate this ability only during your turn. Exile all spells and abilities on the stack. Discard down to your maximum hand size. Damage wears off in this turn or until end of turn effects end. Which means me being able to bounce out my opponent's stuff and saying, well, they don't come back until the beginning of the next end step. This card negates that. You fire off a Flicker Wisp a few times, bounce, it in it, uh, bounce out a bunch of your opponent's stuff. You Sundial of Infinite, they don't get it back. It's exiled for good. Shronic Resonator, uh, pay two to tap it, copy target uh, triggered ability you control. With this and uh, a Soul Ring and Brago, you can go infinite, so that's really nice. Mindstone, just a mana rock that nets you a card if you need to. I think that's uh, one of the standard mana rocks for Commander. Azorius Signet. Um, you're running Azorius Colors. I think this is a good card to run. I could have ran uh, the Key Rune or the Clue Stone. I chose not to and go for the Signet instead because it was cheaper costed. Uh, but you could run those instead of or as well as the Signet. Soul Ring. Another standard uh, Commander staple. Gilded Lotus. Uh, I've actually popped off Gilded Lotus uh, second to third turn more often than not in the stack. So it's really good. Winner's Orb. People hate this card. The great thing about Winner's Orb in this deck is you play Winner's Orb and you already have uh, Peregrine Drake out with a Deadeye Navigator. Winner's Orb does not affect you. You do run uh, a lot of Mana Rocks. You also run a good little amount of... Well, you run a couple of double tapping lands that you can fetch up. By doing that, you can ensure that you're always tapping for more resources than you actually are. Uh, instead of tapping two lands, you're tapping one land. And then on the next turn, you only get to untap one while well, you're already kind of ahead, your, ahead of your opponents. Uh, you pair the Winter's Orb up with Sphere of Safety, Ghostly Prison, and Mystic Study. You have yourself a pillow fort. They have to pay to attack. They have to pay to cast spells or they give you card advantage. But even if they do that, it's still not going to help them because they only get to untap one land a turn. So they have to figure out what it is they want to do. Do they really want to come at you? Or do they just want to bide their time? Either way, it is it is giving you more time to do what you want. And now the lands. We have Command Tower. So we can tap for any color of our commander. Reflecting Pool. Uh, taps for any color that a land we control could produce. City of Brass. When it becomes tapped, deals one damage. Any color, though. Mana Confluence. City of Brass 2.0, pay one life, add one mana uh, of any color to your mana pool. So those are our multicolors. Uh, they tap for anything. Despian Stage, I think this is another commander staple. Nothing like being able to copy a Maze of Ith or maybe one of your own mana fixers. Temple of the False God. Reliquary Tower, you have no maximum hand size. Pretty important considering uh, what you're able to do with your hand. Cathedral of War, in it, enters the battlefield tapped. Exalted, whenever a creature attacks on its own, that creature gets plus one, plus one until in turn, and it taps for colorless. This is actually good because sometimes you will only be attacking with one creature, and any little bit of damage helps. Rogue's Passage, another way for you to be able to sneak that uh, creature in there and get it in for damage or to fire off Brago's abilities. Windbrisk Heights, uh, Hideaway, enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards. Exile one face down under one brisk heights, put the rest on the bottom. Uh, taps for a white, or you can pay a white, tap it. You may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if you attacked with three or more creatures this turn. So again, uh, again with another really good utility land. Um, that's followed up by Halimar Depths. Uh, ETBs tapped, uh, but whenever uh, ETBs, it gets, it allows you to look at the top three cards and put them back in any order. Also taps for blue. Manamo. Taps for a blue, a blue, and tap it. Untap a legendary permanent. You really don't run uh, a lot of legendary permanents, but it's pretty nice. Um, then we have Temple of Enlightenment. ETB's tap, but scry one. 
Zorius Chancery, Bounce of Land, but double activation land. Glacial Fortress. Sajiri Refuge. Uh, ETB is tapped, but uh, gains a life whenever it comes in. Adakar Waste, typical pain land. Floodplain, a good budget version of a uh, fetch land. Comes into play tapped, but you can sack it, search a library for a plane or an island. Uh, fetch lands are kind of budget now with uh, cons having come out, but this is a good budget card, uh, even if that's still a little high. Nimbus Maze, taps for a white if you control an island, and a blue if you control planes. Hollered Fountain. Skycloud Expanse, one, tap it, taps for a blue and white. Sea Chrome Coast, ETB is tapped unless you control two or fewer lands. And then we have our basics. You're only going to run three, four, and five uh, islands. And you're only going to run five planes as well. So you're only going to run ten total basic lands. <clears throat> well, that was the Brago deck. Thanks for watching C uh, Commander decks. Please subscribe and favorite.